part three chapter seven of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seven the reformation in german switzerland the political condition of switzerland was highly favorable to the introduction of protestant ideas the country was divided into cantons or districts an arrangement that had existed from early times each canton was in a measure independent of the rest and yet was connected in a federation with all the others while the roman catholic church held sway over all the people of each canton claimed the right of deciding what their confession should be the spirit pervading all the cantons was that of civil liberty and so when the protestant doctrines descended from the north the swiss saw in them a system of religion closely allied to their political traditions and preferences freedom in the state as the swiss mind saw it was inseparable from freedom of conscience in zurich the largest city in eastern switzerland the doctrines of the german reformers and especially the works of luther took strong hold the people speaking the same language with the germans read the earliest protestant writings with interest while correspondence with the reformers fanned the flame ulrich zwingli was the leader of the new movement in switzerland he was born in wildhaus in fourteen eighty four in his ninth year he went to wesson where he enjoyed the instruction of his uncle the dean of that place he was designed by his parents for the priesthood and no pains were spared to fit him for his calling in fourteen ninety four he went to basel and for three years was a student in the st theodore school he then went to bern where the celebrated humanist heinrich wolfen introduced him to a profound knowledge of the classics he then went to vienna where having latinized his name he appeared as the student congentius in 1502 he returned to basel and in addition to prosecuting further studies taught in the latin school of st martin weitenbach came to basel as professor and he entered a bold protest against indulgences zwingli came under his influence and from that time onward it is likely that the seeds of protestantism lay in his mind in 1506 he became priest at glarus and remained there ten years all the while he was an ardent student he was enraptured with the new humanism and yet he regarded it only as an aid to the study of the bible he wrote at this time nothing but god shall prevent me from acquiring greek not for fame but for the sake of the holy scriptures in 1516 Zwingli went to the celebrated Abbey of Einsiedeln, which is situated on a lofty mountain on the north side of Lake Zurich, and is still visited annually by many thousands of pilgrims. Zwingli, seeing the blind idolatry of the worshippers of the miraculous image of the Virgin Mary in that abbey, began to preach against the superstition. Zwingli awakened violent opposition in Einsiedeln, he was branded as a heretic and yet was made by pucci the pope's agent the object of great attention and flattery the hope was to conquer him by dissimulation but zwingli saw through the deception and kept steadily on in his course he did not remain however any longer in isadown but moved to zurich fifteen nineteen where he was priest in the cathedral here his sermons created the greatest sensation for their freedom of utterance and evangelical tone and were attended by multitudes from all parts of the country indulgences were just now sold in public in that city and zwingli proclaimed against them zurich was ready for the reformation and it was only waiting for a leader the humanist circles were tired of the old darkness and were eager for the light of the gospel the uneducated masses were overwhelmed with the opposition of the Habsburgs and the priesthood. I wish, said Zwingli, that they had bored a hole through the Pope's letter and hung it to his messenger's back, 
that he might carry it home if a wolf is seen in the country you sound an alarm that it may be caught but you will not defend yourselves from the wolves that ruin the bodies and souls of men how appropriate their red hats and cloaks if you shake them out fall ducats if you wring them out flows the blood of your sons brothers and friends such language could not be tolerated maledictions were hurled against zwingli but he continued to preach and the people thronged to hear him he was fearless scriptural and discreet he was now drawn within the circle of reformers and at once became their head among the swiss he preached strongly against indulgences mariolatry clerical celibacy and indeed the whole cluster of those perverted doctrines against which luther was warring in the north mass was abolished in zurich and one by one the institutions of romanism fell to the ground zwingli's sixty-seven articles committed him so thoroughly to the protestant cause that no retracing of his steps was supposable he was very busy with his pen his choosing and freedom of foods his christian introduction and true and false religion were masterpieces of polemical literature the simplicity of zwingli's views of worship was a fundamental quality his repugnance to romanism was so strong that he resolved on a complete renunciation he would have no pictures or organs or bells in the churches or any reminder of the old faith he was morbidly intense in his dread of all materialistic elements he differed radically from luther on the doctrine of the lord's supper the german reformer holding to consubstantiation while zwingli regarded the bread and wine as only symbols of the body and blood of christ the two reformers came into open difference a discussion was arranged and they met in the castle of marburg october fifteen twenty nine where each defended his views no compromise was reached luther with a piece of chalk in his hand wrote in great characters on the table hoc est corpus metum this is my body and with this appeal to christ's own words by which to defend his belief in consubstantiation the discussion closed henceforward there was no agreement between german and swiss theology on the lord's supper luther and zwingli returned to their fields of labor each as firmly intent upon the one work of reform as though he did not differ from his brother on non-essentials in theological interpretation Busser tried very hard to harmonize the swiss and german differences but failed completely the helvetic confession adopted in fifteen thirty six became the final standard of doctrine for the protestants throughout eastern switzerland the religious conflict in the eastern canons became so bitter that it grew into an appeal to arms zurich which had been included in the bishopric of constance threw off all episcopal allegiance banished latin from its churches and burned the time-honored relics some of the eastern canons followed the lead of zurich while others remained firm to catholicism the result was a civil war the roman catholic cantons were aided by the pope the austrian empire and even by spain while france and england helped the protestant cantons in the battle of capel near zurich october eleventh fifteen thirty one the protestant army was almost annihilated and zwingli was killed yet a moral victory remained with the protestants inasmuch as they were allowed by the treaty of capel the free exercise of their religion in their own cantons while restoring catholicism in the five cantons basel was an important centre of protestant movements in german switzerland the council which had been held there in the preceding century had left a strong desire for reform among the people the university was a rallying place of minds intent upon the liberty of science erasmus lived in its cloisters for a time and gave his scholarly energies to the good work hedio capito and rublin 
preached the new doctrines with energy and success ecolampadius though a german by birth became pastor of st martin's church and was the acknowledged leader of the cause in the city in other parts of eastern switzerland the reformation spread with amazing rapidity and in addition to zurich and basel the cantons of st gall and schaffhausen renounced allegiance to the roman catholic church and introduced protestant worship and doctrines throughout their territory End of chapter 7